Okay, hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. I hope everything's going well. I'm currently in India right now. You can tell by the hand designs. You can tell by the noise in the back. The microphone was lost in a luggage, but it's all been part of the journey and still having so much fun. I'm back here creating a video today on I think a super interesting image that was shared about the Y Combinator generative AI landscape. So shout out to Alex, who looks like was just interested in putting this together. I've got his Twitter profile here. And as always, I got too many links. He has some say to build this graph for this image because he is part of the YC W23 cohort here. And so he put this image together with an interesting breakdown from both business function and then engineering function and then all the use cases or industries or applications of this technology. Some people are super interested to see, for example, this kind of technology creep into areas like accounting and finance, where generally like most of the use cases that we've seen to date are more marketing sales. And then obviously most of us interested in following this space are coming across DALI and image generation. But as this technology becomes more and more understood, the functional capabilities of it become more unlocked. I think we're gonna see it push into all types of spaces and areas. And this is why Combinator, obviously one of the most well-known investors in the world, investing 500,000 into every single company on standard terms. And then they invest 125 for 7% equity and then 375, which is then an like uncapped safe. And I think generally most companies are taking this. So that means that the companies in graph here are about at least 500K USD richer and many more of them obviously using the leverage from the Y Combinator's brand the program, the demo day will be coming in a few months here to then raise more money. So I'm expecting that as the interest in this space continues, we're gonna see more and more investment into it. And I think it also speaks to some of the conversations that we've been having here at Speak AI, which is, this is a super interesting time. It's a super exciting time, but it's also a crowded space. It's a competitive space. So many people are wanting to get into it because it's so exciting. People love cutting edge. I think in the last few years, we obviously saw the rise of crypto and things like that. People just generally love being on the cutting edge of technology, but my thought process around these large language models and generative AI is that they're seemingly true business applications of this technology today. And the thing that I'm following and interested is great, there's these startups coming through YC. They have some, maybe some traction, some validation, maybe they're ex-found. YC has funded them for some reason. And if you are interested, you can see the startup directory and you can filter by the actual season. So you can see all the companies in it with a little blurb with the tags and then jump and visit their sites here. But not only are we going to see these companies try to capitalize on that space, we're already seeing major companies do it. So I'm gonna create a separate video on this, but Notion AI. With the massive reach they have and the amount of customers, they have now released Notion AI for everyone. And so it's great that there are all these new startups entering the space, but we've seen the same thing with Microsoft and OpenAI. The, the network effect that they have, the infrastructure, the user base, the customer base they have allows them to deploy this technology at massive scale at a super competitive rate or bundling it into the technology. All these opportunities from a business that gives them a huge advantage when they're trying to bring technology into the market. And I do believe that maybe a small percentage of these companies will be successful, but I expect just like every YC company and just startups and business in general, most of these will not be here in a few years, maybe even shorter time period on that, just because dollars have gone down. There's too much competition in this exact space and there will be a challenge to differentiate yourselves moving forward. And we're seeing the same thing across the board. Not only these startups, we're seeing big companies doing it. And then we're seeing like in, well, I would say further along companies like Assembly AI, which is a YC funded company, that's deploying this technology too. It's interesting that across the board, these organizations, these businesses are adopting this technology, implementing it, and there's super interesting sort of challenges to this because of the the just the pricing and the characters that are often required for long documents. There is a lot of great stuff going on here, but there's also some pieces that are left up to debate that are most likely going to be figured out because it's so crucial for the success of this technology. And then this just movement and transformation that happens. But overall, I just thought this was something worthwhile to highlight in a signal. And we can see a great article here by Oliver who talks about some interesting points about 18% of the current cohort being some kind of generative AI startup. 
and then asking if that's a lot or not. And you can see some previous cohorts that he listed here where only, for example, 2.5% of, of one of the batches was crypto or Web3. And so generative AI is already in a very short time period making an impact on where YC is invested. It's obviously a hype cycle. I think things are getting... Or he talks about, is it getting overheated and is it a, a bad situation that we're heading into? My feeling is that we're going to see just the cream of the crop companies execute properly while most of them fail to because they don't have the capital, the defined customer base, customer base, the ability to drive growth to that customer base, to realize actual business valuable in a specific way that is not just too horizontal. And so I think this is just one image that came out, but I think it actually speaks to a lot of things. And that's why I wanted to spend some time on it today. And if you are interested a little bit more on YC, I wrote, I printed a video about the YC application. I also have one about my experience interviewing with YC, which was intense. You can follow Paul here as always. And then I've got some links from the actual YC companies. I also just picked out from this graph, a couple of the websites that to me, I just looked at ones that had .ai in the d domain so I could find them really quickly. So this is the true end here. Interested again, a lot of times YC people are going very MVP. So they've got a beautiful looking landing page, but how much is behind it? And I think generally most of these are just using OpenAI or Cohere or some of their AI, other AIs because they're so early that is the value truly there yet? Maybe it's possible, but I think there's still a lot to do. And I think it does speak to this idea of prompt engineering and the interface that you can put on top of this technology on the back end. But overall, I do think there is a lot of work to differentiate this. OpenAI, these companies have such a big head start, such a big engineering capacity and money capacity, ability to raise funding. All these things make this an exciting but difficult time for companies in the generative AI space. I'll finalize it. Super exciting, super interested. That's why I'm sharing this. That's why I'm participating in this space and creating so many videos on it. I appreciate you checking them out if you have. And I'll look forward to sharing more. This was a video on the YC, the Y Combinator W23, Winter 23, Generative AI landscape. I hope you enjoyed. Check out the links and let me know your feedback on how you're feeling about this all. Thank you very much. Have a great day.